guys welcome back to my channel if you're new here my name is amanda and this is my may wrap up so in the month of may i read a total of eight books six of which were on my tbr pursuit tbr so i had another successful tbr pursuit month i did not finish my monthly tbr however because i did not get to queen of shadows by sarah j moss but i am currently reading that now and will have it finished by the end of june the first book i want to talk to you about is moon of the crusted snow this is by wabgishig rice he is a native author this is his debut novel this is a dystopian novel about a native community who is living off the grid when the world collapses. They have no idea what's going on and they're just trying to make do with what they have. Um, and then white people show up and start to fuck things up. Of course they do. This book was fantastic. I gave it four out of five stars. I buddy read this with Samantha and I think she gave it three out of five. It was really, really good. The first half of the novel was fantastic. This writer really knows how to write suspense. I was on the edge of my seat, my anxiety was through the roof, and I just wanted to know what was going to happen. And then towards the end, some other like crazy stuff happened and I was just like, oh my god. It was just, it was really, really good. Um, and I've just found out that there's going to be a sequel, so Samantha, you and I are definitely going to have to read that because this was fantastic. If you're looking for a dystopian novel or just a really good suspense novel, I highly, highly recommend this book. After that, I picked up The Wife Upstairs by Rachel Hawkins. This is her first adult novel. It is a Jane Eyre retelling, so it's thriller, gothic thriller, I guess. Um, I gave this one four out of five stars. I really did enjoy it. I have never read the original text, so I don't have anything to base this on, but Jane was insufferable. I could not stand her. She was naive, she was entitled, and she just really grated on my nerves, which might have been the point, maybe. I don't know because I haven't read the original text, but I did quite enjoy this. So if you're on the fence about it and you're looking for a thriller, it was a quick read. Um, just know that Jane is insufferable and you probably won't like her, but I think Rachel Hawkins did that on purpose. And then I picked up An Ember in the Ashes by Sapa Tahir. This is a YA fantasy series. We get the perspective of two individuals, one of Layla, whose grandparents were murdered in front of her. Her brother was arrested for treason, so she's trying to get him out of jail. You know, she, he's the only family that she has, so she's willing to risk it all to save her brother. And then we have the perspective of Elias, who is... A soldier at this elite like military school and he doesn't want to be there but you can't leave so he's trying to figure out how to escape and on the back here it says that Lila is a slave Elias is a soldier neither is free it's a very good series um, the first time I read it like I said I gave it five stars the second time I only gave it four and that's only because I felt like it dragged a little bit I mean most of my enjoyment came from like the last 150 pages of the book so I'm really excited to get into the next one which I have not read yet but if you're looking for a quick YA fantasy series then I would suggest picking this one up um, you know, it only took me two days to get through it and it is 450 pages. So it is a quick read, but it did lag a little bit, just be aware. And then I picked up The Duke and I by Julia Quinn. This is the first book in the Bridgerton series and I gave it two stars. I did not like it. Um, I felt like, you know, there is a rape scene in here where the woman rapes the man and it's never really talked about. It's never explained. It was just like common and everyone's just fine with it. and. I just feel like it's just gross. I don't know. Um, also, I just feel like not a ton happened. I wasn't really attached to any of the characters and I think I'll just stick with the Netflix series instead of the books. I don't think I'm gonna continue on with that one. So unfortunately, that was a miss for me this month. After that, I picked up Ninth House by Lee Bardugo. I gave this one three stars. This is about a girl named Alex who is going to Yale and she's recruited to be part of this group that basically keeps the secret societies in line. They help them keep ghosts out of their rituals and they just make sure that they're on the up and up and they're not doing anything bad. When her partner suddenly goes missing and she's left to do everything on her own while she's still learning and trying to figure out how to get him back. Um, it's dark, trigger warnings for attempted rape, for rape, for sexual assault. I don't even know what else, but definitely tr trigger warnings. I enjoyed it. I gave this one three stars. I didn't love it. 
I will continue on with the series because I want to know what's going to happen next. But Leigh Bardugo's writing just takes me so long to get into. Like, I felt like this book, you know, you're just dumped into this world and you just learn as you go. Like, you don't really know what's going on and I really don't like that. At least not when it comes to her books. Um, I just... I don't know. I, I don't think the writing was bad. You know, I, I did quite enjoy the story, but it just takes me so long to get into it. It was like over 100 pages before I was finally feeling comfortable in the world and kind of understood what was going on. And that just might be a me thing. I know people love Leigh Bardugo, but um, yeah, so this one was just an okay read for me, but I will continue on with the series when the next novel comes out. After that, I picked up Lost in the Neverwoods by Aiden Thomas. This is a Peter Pan retelling. Um, I gave it four out of five stars. I didn't love this one as much as I love Cemetery Boys, but I do think it was good. I mean, it follows the Peter Pan story pretty closely. This one's a little darker, which I enjoyed. Um, there's a little bit of like a romance in here, which I felt like was not necessary at all. Um, but yeah, I mean, I still enjoyed it. I still really enjoy it in Thomas's writing and I will pick up anything that they write. But unfortunately, this was only a four star for me. I was hoping it was going to be five. I then picked up Every Last Fear by Alex Finley. This one is a psychological thriller about a boy named Matt who is away at college when his family decides to take a trip to Mexico. While they're there, there's a gas leak at their condo and they all pass away. And then Matt is contacted by the FBI to go to Mexico and retrieve their bodies and bring them home. And as the FBI agent and Matt are kind of looking into things a little bit, they realize that there's seems to be something sinister going on that maybe it wasn't an accident after all and the story kind of goes from there. There are a lot of perspectives in here. Um, you get like the family members, each one of them, before they take this trip, before they pass away. You get Matt's perspective, you get the FBI agent's perspective, you get the older brother's perspective. I mean you get everybody's perspective in here at some point. And it was very entangled, really messy, and I don't mean that like the writing was messy, but like the web that was constructed because of all of that's going on in here was really messy. I feel like some of the twists and turns were just a little too much. Like the author could have scaled back some twists and it would have been fine. Um, some of his writing choices were a little strange to me. Um, you know, there's like a black character in here who's not, he's just like a supporting cast member really. He doesn't have a storyline, but when he's speaking the author chose to use aave which i i believe that alex finley is a white man correct me if i'm wrong um but i believe he's a white man so i just feel like that wasn't necessary um there's another character in here who's indian but he's a republican and like he talked about that i don't know there was just some weird writing choices in here that i was just kind of like I don't know. So I did give this one four out of five stars. It was a really quick read um, and I didn't guess the entire plot so that was nice but like I said th there were some writing choices that were weird and there were a lot of twists and turns that I just felt like were just added in as like extra that just really didn't need to be there in my opinion but um, I will probably pick up their next novel. I think this is a debut possibly. I don't know but um, it's blurred by Karen Slaughter so we'll see. We'll see. And then the last thing that I read in the month of May was Ghost Summer by Tana Reeve Dew. This is a collection of her stor short stories and Samantha actually recommended this to me. This is my one of my TBR pursuits. Um, it's one of her favorite books. She recommended it to me. I'm so glad that she did. I absolutely love this book. This is almost a five star but not quite. Um, it's hard to rate anthologies because you know you don't love every story but it's a horror novel. It's a collection of her short stories. I feel like they're, they were fantastic. The audio is absolutely fantastic. Tana Reeve do actually narrate some of the stories. And um, yeah, if you're looking for a horror anthology, like pick it up. And if you've never read anything by this author, I highly recommend the anthology because you get um, to see her writing in different stories. And it's just it was really good. I'm definitely going to have to pick up some more of her works in the future. Um, I can't really tell you what any of them are about, but I can tell you like some of my favorites from the collection. My absolute favorite story in the collection is called Free Gems Mine. That one was fantastic. I also really, really enjoyed Danger Word, which 
she wrote with her husband and I think is a TV series. So I'm definitely gonna have to check that out. And then there are three stories that are all part of the same story um, that I really enjoyed. And that was Removal Order, Herd Immunity, and Carriers. They're all part of like the same storyline. So I really enjoyed those ones as well. I mean, all of the stories were great, but those were my absolute favorites out of the collection. Oh, Ghost Summer, which is the story that the book is named after. That is really good as well. So overall, I had a great reading month. Let me know down below what your favorite book of the month was. And if you don't want to do that, go ahead and leave me an emoji that is red. Any red emoji will do, just so I know that you were here and you enjoyed what you watched. Thank you guys so much for watching. Don't forget to follow me on Instagram, Twitter, and Goodreads, and I'll talk to you later. Bye.